Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this uh, film that I'm uh, attempting to make. Um, this week is Easter of uh, 2014, and uh, I have my wife uh, with her relatives, mother and father and sister, down here in Italy, in Rome, celebrating my uh, step, not my stepmother, but my mother-in-law's uh, 75th birthday. And uh, I have my kids up at my parents, uh, a thousand kilometers north of where I'm currently at. And I thought I'd uh, take the opportunity to um, head out into the woods and uh, enjoy nature for uh, about three days. So I thought I'd start by uh, showing everybody where this uh, is going to take place. I hope you recognize Africa, Europe, and uh, Sweden way up here. And I hope you'll also be able to see this in the video. Uh, we'll we'll uh, find out how that looks like. Anyway, <clears throat> we will, uh, or I will uh, start by taking the train from uh, Stockholm the capital of Sweden, which is over here. I live in the northwestern parts of Stockholm. So taking the commuter train into Stockholm and further on down south of Stockholm, down here to Gnesta. And if we continue in there, here we have Gnesta and the train is coming here. I'll be jumping off and start by uh, following some roads up to a trail which is called Sörmlandsleden or the Sörmland Trail. <coughs> Switching to a perhaps more readable map. This is Gnesta where I'll be starting. The actual Sörmlandsleden passes through up here. So this is an, uh, a connection, connecting trail to get up there. The distance from here is about 13 kilometers. And if we zoom in a little bit, this is the, uh, the first day, or the afternoon of the first day. Uh, I will uh, be aiming to get up here and head west up to this mountain which has a lookout point also a wind shelter somewhere up here according to photographs and uh, google earth and so on uh, there is trees around here so it's, it shouldn't be a problem to find a, a suitable spot to uh, hang my hammock uh, get up there drop my pack and uh, close by to a fresh water source, a fresh water spring, if that is needed. Um, day two, I'll backtrack another fresh water source if it should be uh, needed to fill up water. Water is not an issue basically. Uh, water is drinkable in just about all the lakes. Uh, along the Sörmlands trail. They recommend that you boil it obviously, but uh, the risk is very small that you should uh, get sick from drinking water in, uh, in most parts of Sweden actually. Anyway, uh, heading east down here and I'll be changing my map. That spot was over here. So continuing east, south, down to this spot and we'll zoom in a little bit again. Very nice spot. Uh, I have not walked this area at all before so this is uh, first time in this uh, part, these uh, stages of the Sörmland Trail. So this is where I'll be spending uh, the second night and the third day, if 
for any reason I want to bug out as quickly as possible, I can go down here and hop on a train and go back home. This is the distance you see, so it's not very large uh, long distances. But what I'm aiming for is to continue east and along this uh, hill, or well, I can't call it a mountain, uh, a stretch of hills. Uh, there are a lot of old mining holes from the 15th century up to the 19th century. So uh, it will be interesting, and this is what I'm aiming for, to, uh, to uh, take a look at those. They uh, have lots of information, uh, signs, when you come to this. This is probably the most known one. Tunnelgruvan, or the tunnel mine, which is uh, basically a ravine, uh, ravine thing. So we'll hopefully we'll be able to get some uh, photos and video from that, that place. Again, fresh water source. <coughs> and continuing back to the world and uh, hop on the train here to go back home. So three days. Uh, the track shouldn't be any excruciating. That's not, I'm not aiming for mileage. I want to have uh, experience and to relax and enjoy the nature. So that's the trek. Um, final part of the preparation is having a look at the forecasted weather. So I'll be heading out from home uh, in the morning. And I'll be re reaching uh, Gnesta, the originating point, about midday. Uh, have some food there in the town. And... Uh, well, you can see for yourself the temperatures for Thursday and Friday. So I'll be finished that Friday afternoon sometime. I expect around lunch or soon after lunch. So small chance of uh, rain in the early hours, but this is nothing to be too bothered about. And my wife gets back from Italy on Thursday. Uh, so we're looking at a great weekend, hopefully. <laughs> Okay, so that's the uh, the planning part. You've seen the route, you've seen the weather. And I'll uh, cut to the to the backpack basically, just to show you what I'm carrying along. Uh, see you soon. Okay, now that we have looked at the route and uh, the forecasted weather, I'll do a quick uh, overview of uh, my pack for this trip. Uh, the backpack is an Osprey uh, XS58 liter, a light and uh, lovely pack, uh, love it, it's very comfortable without being a heavy item. In it uh, I'll be having the, the heaviest items, it's the water bladder, a no name water bladder, 2 liter, and a Nalgene bottle, 1 liter, the Nalgene heavy but sturdy. I prefer it actually in the winter time when I use it to have boiling water, hot water with me when I go to sleep outside. So usually in summer I, I switch that for uh, lighter plastic bottles, but uh, it'll come in with me on this trip. Trekking poles, uh, half, half um, of a sleeping mat, which I just cut in half. Uh, this is uh, just something that I usually have uh, to sit on, on brakes and so on, uh, to uh, rest my feet on under the hammock when I'm, when I'm uh, without shoes and so on. I fold that once more, one more time and uh, shove it under the, uh, the shock cords on the outside of the, of the bag. Next we have uh, this blue, it's, uh, well, I'm going to keep that a mystery item. I'll be showing you, uh, hopefully from out in the terrain, what, uh, what is contained in this one. We're excited, I just uh, received this item. And, uh, let's see, for rain protection, uh, a poncho, which can double as a, as a tarp. 
and uh, the other piece of rain protection is a small umbrella. I find that uh, usually if it's not pouring down when you're trekking in the woods, uh, an umbrella works just fine to protect you uh, from, from, uh, from the rain. Uh, other miscellaneous items, standard Mora knife, uh, a spoon for eating, backup uh, compass, very simple uh, thermometer, which I doubt its accuracy, uh, whistle pipe, Victorinox tool, and uh, just a little bit of a tip. Usually, I'm going to close this one up so I don't hurt myself. Uh, under the corkscrew, if I manage to open it with one hand, there you go. There is on most models a small hole. I'm not sure if you can see this if it focuses. There's a small hole which uh, is perfect for inserting a small pin in and uh, that is locked in place when you close up the corkscrew and this is an uh, excellent tool for puncturing any blisters that may occur on your feet. Very handy little addition to that tool. I'll be bringing a simple uh, tripod for the camera and a strap and uh, I hope to be able to strap this uh, onto the trekking pole and uh, use the, that as an extension for my arm uh, so I'll be able to film myself without keeping the arm stretch out. We'll see how that works. So all these items uh, will be placed in pockets and uh, around in the on the backpack, not packed in, in on the inside. And um, well, continuing, I'll get back to this packing bag uh, to sleep. My hammock, tarp, and ridge line, and uh, a couple of tent poles. A pillow, inflatable pillow. And this is the hygiene and, uh, and uh, medical <laughs> section. That's a, a, a towel, headlight, uh, sunscreen protection, toilet paper, and some uh, uh, matches in an old uh, film canister. Pre-digital era, for those who remember that stuff. A little bit of compede, a uh, couple of tapes. I've, uh, this is early in the spring, so I haven't been walking all that much. So, if any blisters, any problems on, on the feet should occur, it's always uh, prudent to take care of that at once, not wait for, for anything to develop. Uh, some hand sanitizers. This is a small uh, uh, container for, for various uh, medicine things. Uh, I have a toothbrush, toothpaste and so on uh, in there so that all goes into the uh, to the red bag uh, another miscellaneous item which is uh, played somewhere on the outside in the outside pocket uh, a sewing tool in Sweden you're not allowed to uh, to uh, sew down any living trees or bushes or anything that lives actually but uh, in a pinch, if you have to, it's nice to be able to uh, to um, be able to make a fire without using your teeth to to uh, gather wood. If it's if you can't find any dry wood lying on the ground and so on, so I usually carry that stuff with me as well. Uh, for cooking, the Trangia kitchen. I'm using uh, using gas. More uh, matches. I always like to have great number of backup when it comes to making fire so I have a lighter matches more matches a fire steel uh, which also has a whistle so you remember I had a whistle over there there's a whistle there there's actually on the backpack uh, straps there's a emergency whistle as well and um, 
these uh, things are for you set fire to these and uh, it's for fire starting basically usually used at home but it's very nice and simple and, and lightweight to um, use it in the outdoors as well and to be able to it takes a while to get this lit so that's uh, mainly what the what the lighter is for uh, can opener and the gas burner and fuel for that some miscellaneous items uh, maps for the trip a book and cell phone which uh, is for uh, well emergency if, if you have to call something someone provided that there's coverage out in the woods uh, also have uh, audiobooks here but I prefer if I'm relaxing I, I much enjoy to, uh, to read an actual book but it's time to go to bed it's nice to have something to listen to as well uh, this is my well wallet so travel passes and a credit card key back home this is an uh, another new item for me which I'm trying out this is uh, a battery loader so this is an accumulator battery uh, with a cable to recharge this guy and the camera if need be so we'll see how, uh, how many charges uh, and this one manages out in the woods and uh, then we come to the soft stuff this is uh, my sleeping clothes fresh pair of socks so these items I only use when sleeping it's not for backup for when I'm walking something like that so I want to have dry and comfortable uh, stuff long johns shirt balaclava all for sleeping. I also have a, a pair of gloves with uh, cut off fingers which is nice when you're in, at camp. It's a bit cold and uh, you still have to fill with your fingers. Very nice to have those. Pack up socks and these items uh, go into a packing bag. These uh, things will be carried easily accessible on the backpack. Just a hat Again, springtime, uh, the neck is usually not that used to sun, so if it's sunny weather, it's nice to have protection from the sun on the back side of the head as well. Um, mer merino wool sweater, thin, buff, love this one, so many uses, great item, never leave home without it. When I'm out trekking, I use... Uh, tights and uh, synthetic short sleeved shirt so I'll be using this this and a little bit thicker fleece to um, to adjust the clothes according to the temperature and if it's if I'm getting warm or if I'm getting cold so these are for walking also on me I have a, a cup folding cup Nice to have if you want to bring some water from a source somewhere. So that's pretty much it when it comes to clothes. Well, also what I'll be wearing in the morning when I leave home. A jacket and a pair of gloves. It's chilly in the morning still. Food. <clears throat> Just going freeze dried basically. Uh, I'll also be bringing some uh, snacks, you know, a uh, little bit of uh, chocolate, nuts and uh, raisins, basically. I just snacked during the day when I'm out walking. Um, three days, I'll be eating breakfast at home. Lunch uh, is probably when I get reach to uh, Gnesta, the, the originating destination originating destination that sounds strange anyway uh, where, I'm, uh, where I'll be getting off the train so dinner is first meal out in the wood breakfast lunch dinner breakfast and lunch 
so I'm expecting to reach civilization uh, before it's time for dinner, but I always have at least one uh, spare meal if something goes not according to plan. So that all goes into one packing bag, so I have that compartmentalized. And a trash bag. So, for extra warmth. Uh, down jacket. Very nice when you're at camp. Even if it's not extremely cold, it's nice to, to have something like that to, uh, to put on you. Under quilt, sleeping bag. So these items uh, are the first to be shoved into the backpack. And this one, this yellow one, is uh, the packing bag that I'll be using. It's also, it's called a schnossel. It's an expat schnossel bag, so it doubles. If I'm out tent camping, I have an expat uh, inflatable air mattress, which is also insulated, which has an integrated pump. So you pump it with uh, using your hands, but it takes a long time to do that. So this then doubles as an... Uh, as a pump, you attach it to the to the air mattress, fill it with air, close it up, and push in the air there. So, but today it's just an, uh, uh, a watertight uh, packing bag. So, these things go in first. Shove them in, in inside the inside the backpack. In here. Next, I have the spare clothes, the sleeping clothes, in another backpack. I don't try to compress that and push out all the air and close it, but I just close it lightly and shove it down on top of the uh, under quilt and those uh, things. So I, I uh, try to compress that as much as possible, but I don't, if I want to, the sleeping bag for instance comes with a very small uh, bag that you can squeeze it into, so you have a rock hard package, but if you have a bunch of those Together, you will find that you have a lot of empty space, air pockets between these tightly pipe, uh, packed items. So it's better to, in my opinion at least, it's better to squish things down, uh, fill out the bag from top to bottom, and uh, you'll have no uh, unnecessary volume wasted. Okay, so that's the st uh, soft stuff. Uh, these items that I used to uh, will probably change into and out of when I'm walking will be in the top lid or somewhere where it's easily accessible. Uh, as we've seen from the weather forecasts, it's most likely not going to be raining, so rain during uh, the trek is, shouldn't be a problem in this case. If it were to be a problem, well, then I would have it these items also in the uh, in the packing bag. <coughs> these things uh, will uh, be easily accessible in the top lid as well, in case I need to reach them more or less quickly. Uh, the living quarters, the tarp and the hammock, comes on top of uh, the soft stuff. And on top of that, we'll have food, the cooking stuff, map goes in my pocket. Actually, being a former military guy with the, some fire control training and also a pilot, uh, I really want to, I track with my thumb on the map. So I don't want to use the map when I'm lost, I want to not get lost by, by always uh, following my position on the map as well. So the smartphone obviously, some navigation software there as well as a backup, you use the GPS if you really get lost. And uh, but that's just for backup. The compass over here that I have, oh, there. Also just to get your bearing if you can't see the sun and so on. Uh, nice thing about this uh, trail, the Sörnlands Leden, Sörnlands Trail, it's, it's uh, usually quite well marked so it's not easy to get lost but I've done that a couple of times for instance uh, when the wood has been cut down 
uh, and so on. So it, it can happen on, on, on occasion. Uh, the book and this stuff also packed away somewhere. It's not something I use during the trek. So it goes somewhere down into the into the pack. And that's pretty much it. So I'll get packing and uh, just give you a quick look at the uh, at the bag when it's all done. <laughs>